morning to you again. Um, my name is uh, Bishop William Shields. I am a local pastor here. I have a ministry about 15 minutes from here in Norcross, um, which is about 15 minutes away. I've been the pastor of Hopewell uh, Baptist Church for 43 years. Um, and we grew from 200 members to over 12,000 before the pandemic. Uh, we are back uh, with about 8,000 now. And I'm, I'm grateful for what God has done. The campus is built, it's a 32 acre campus, was built where a junkyard stood just a few years ago. Uh, a junkyard of old cars and tires and buses and just a junkyard. But my encouragement to you today, before we get into our lesson, is be faithful to the call. When I was asked to participate, my schedule is so busy, it's a week after Easter, and I just cannot, I just can't fit it in. I've got to lecture at Emory um, University School of Religion later. But uh, when Pastor Damon Kim said, I said, what is the content of the conference? He said, to encourage pastors and church leaders. This is what Pastor Damon Kim, he just walked in the door, said to me, to bring Jesus back into the church, to bring Jesus back into the pulpit. That's all I needed to hear. I said, okay, um, I thank you for the opportunity. And that's why we're here today. Uh, to talk about and to reason about and encourage uh, Jesus back into the church, back into our teaching and our preaching. He is the center of our joy. It is all about Jesus. Uh, so now, uh, let's get comfortable and do, we'll have Q&A after the presentation here. I'm going to use one passage of scripture, one verse one verse from Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Matthew uh, chapter 16, verse 16. Here is uh, Jesus Christ with his disciples, much like we're gathered here today. And, uh, and he asked them a question. They were there actually for some R&R. &R for the rest and relaxation. But then Jesus asked them a question, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but uh, the 16th verse of Matthew 16 uh, gives a answer from Simon Peter. And it says, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So then I've chosen as a topic uh, today, uh, and it's like preaching to the choir, preaching to pastors and church leaders. But, but, but it's important that we have a topic so that we can, uh, we can come into, uh, into a synergy in this teaching this morning. And, and the topic is, who is Jesus Christ? And, and, and that's, you say, well, but pastor, that's why we're here. Well, uh, too many churches in this country, in America, have lost that zeal for Jesus Christ, have, 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 have gone into prosperity teaching only. And, and it is about Jesus. It is about Jesus. We just celebrated uh, his resurrection just two days ago. So then we must, as church leaders, must be uh, not have an abstract um, feeling or or, 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 or commitment to Jesus. We must have a concrete, we must be, uh, when, and, and I say to my congregation quite often, been pastoring the, the same congregation for 43 years. I say that, this to them often. When you get tired of hearing about Jesus, then <laughs> you're at the wrong church. When you get tired of hearing his name, because we, this lesson is, is going to establish for us, you already know the scripture, what Jesus said about 
the church. Throughout the ages, there have been many conjectures and much discussion about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're gathering here today, 52 countries represented. Men have asked, who is Jesus? Uh, just, just a short while ago, I, I, um, I was on CNN uh, during the Easter season a few years ago, and that question was asked, and because someone, someone uh, came up with this, someone, some people, some pastors, the idea that there is another gospel uh, that that is missing, and so the question was, then who is Jesus Christ? And, and I was happy to be chosen to answer that and not apologize for it. Who is the one who claims the attention of all the world? Who is this mighty man who has such an abiding place in the hearts of countless millions of people? I was asked if I needed an aid, I needed a PowerPoint, if I want to do bullets or do uh, points. Um, not to church leaders, I, I'll do that in my teaching classes for, for, for my disciples, but you are, you're here because you believe. You're here because you believe in Jesus, and thank God you do. There have been many views about Jesus. Some have said that he was a mad man, that he was insane, that he was in league with Beelzebub, uh, the prince of the devils. This is all in the scriptures. Um, then there are those who, others have said that he was exactly what he claimed to be, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Anybody in here believe that? Okay, now this is a participation. This is not a class. This is not a lecture. I'll be lecturing at, at uh, Emory later on today. This is this. The, we are church leaders. May not all be pastors, but church leaders. So, you know, when you're preaching, you say, you, we constantly say, say amen, somebody, or can you hear what I'm saying? But, 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 but then, if you agree, and amen means I agree, I concur. And uh, if you really, if we really get to a point where you say hallelujah, let me say this to you. Hallelujah is ascribed to God. You don't say it at ball games in other places. You know that, don't you, leaders? It's only ascribed to God. Uh, you, when you say hallelujah, that's the highest praise you can give to God. Um, the son of the living God. Watch this. One day, one day, Jesus called his disciples together. Uh, they are at Caesarea Philippi. And they're at Caesarea Philippi while having some R&R &R rest and relaxation. Jeez. Jesus. It's kind of hard for me to just say the name and not pause and I ain't get goose pimples when I say it and not just because it's cool in this room. When I, when I think about Jesus and when I call Jesus, watch this, watch this. Jesus asked the question, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? In other words, what he was saying, church leaders, uh, what's the gossip about your pastor? <laughs> what's the what, what, what are they saying about me? I need to know. And uh, then some said, uh, well, Jesus, they say that you are John the Baptist. And, and then another disciple said that uh, you are Elijah. And another one said that you are Jeremiah. Watch this. And then Jesus got to this conjunction, but he said, but whom say ye that I am? In other words, you've told me what people are saying about me. Whom do you say that I am? Do you know who I am? So that's my purpose here over the next, uh, next 25, 30 minutes. So then Jesus is asking the disciples who were there in his teaching, in his preaching. I mean, let me help us here. I, I, at my church, I, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, seats 2,500, but I, but I don't stand behind the podium when I'm preaching very often. I, before I, before I got two PhD degrees, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. 
when you feel the Holy Ghost, it's kind of hard to stand still. Amen. I, I, I know I, I know you're supposed to do this and you ever said he was not a proper teacher today because he was moving around. Let me help you. I don't apologize for being filled with the Holy Ghost and, and for and for and for and for, for feeling the fire. Here it is. Watch this thing. Uh, Jesus said, Do you know who I am? You've been with me, you've seen me teach, you've heard me teach, you've seen my miracles, but do you really know who I am? Uh, you, you know, you, you're, you're close to me. You're my disciples. I chose you to carry on my work. Once I've finished it, I'm going home. But do you really know who I am? That's the question today. Do we really know who Jesus is? And then Simon Peter said, uh, I know. He was a sportsman. I like to call him impetuous Peter. Peter always spoke. Sometimes he's Sometimes he put his uh, foot in his mouth because he's, he would speak before he thought. But this one, he answered correctly. And he answered with power. I know who you are. You are the Christ. You are, the, you are Christ. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, you have spoken correctly. I am. That's who I am. And then I don't know, and I, now, I, this is, I can't prove this in the Bible, you can't either, but, but Peter must have, must have put his chest out, you know, sometime when we get the correct answer. He must have stuck his, he must have stuck his chest out of something, and, and uh, but Jesus said, uh, put your chest back in, Peter. <laughs> he said, he said, you, you can stop boasting now before the other brothers, stop boasting before the other 11, uh, because, you're not that smart. <laughs> you, you're not the spiritual giant in this group. He says, flesh and blood didn't, didn't reveal that to you. But my father, who is in heaven, he revealed it to you. But watch this. Here it is, my church leaders. Here it is. I, I've left my manuscript. I'll get back. Watch this. <laughs> Jesus said, Peter, Upon this rock, not you, you're a little rock, Petro Peter. He said, Upon this truth, I build my church. Church leaders, there is no church, no matter what the denomination is, if it's not built on the solid rock, Jesus Christ. Upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church now watch this so you said well but the church wasn't built then it wasn't built then 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 then, then jesus just just acknowledge he's the son of the living god that he's the second person in the, in the trinity in the godhead but was the church built yet uh, no, prophetically it was. You do understand because your church leaders, pro prophetic words spoken, um, yeah. a prophecy or prophetic speaking is accurately uh, speaking something uh, in the future that will happen. It's going to happen. It's got to happen. So when Jesus said, "Upon this rock I build my church." Uh, then, then we we all in here uh, adoringly say, church leaders, boy, my church is this, my church, and, and I and I do, but but I give the glory to the Father because I know that I'm not smart enough, brave enough, I have enough in spiritual intelligence or learning uh, to turn a 32 acre junkyard into a beautiful churchyard with schools. And and, uh, and senior citizens uh, buildings all over the campus. God did that. I understand that because in a vision, the Lord told me, uh, He says, uh, Shields, tell your people your future, the future of Hopewell, uh, which was now about 200 members, down in the junkyard. I said, okay. Who's going to do that? 
he reminded me and took me to the scripture we read this morning, Pastor Benjamin. He said, uh, didn't I say to you, didn't I say, didn't I say to you that upon this rock I build my church? <laughs> so we can't be afraid when, when the Lord gives us a vision, pastors, and he says, I will build my church. And if he gives you, we like to use this terminology, if he gives you the vision, he'll give you the provision. But then we got to work within the provision. <laughs> we can't just say, the Lord says, it, so do it, Lord. No, no, no. We really got to go to work then. But it is his church. And we cannot, we can never, never, never remove ourselves from the love of Jesus, from the presence of Jesus. And if we preach Jesus, we teach Jesus, he will grow the church. He will, he will protect the church. And he will provide. He will provide. I know, I know in this 21st century, well, started in the 20th century, it was all about, it was all about prosperity this and prosperity this and bring your money and throw it on the steps and all that thing. Now, now, what did Jesus say? What did, what did the Lord say? He says, seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and no no some things will no no a few things will be no 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 just no 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 99.9% of the thing oh all, all, do you believe that all things will be added unto you to the church and to your personal life yes he'll do that but it's got to be about Jesus. Say to God, let me see. Ah, if the Lord said, don't be guilty of 50 lucre. For 15 years of my 43 years of pastor at Coco, uh, that grew from two acres, 200 members to 32 acres at 12,000 members uh, before the pandemic now down to 8,000. For 15 years, I did not accept a salary. I didn't accept compensation. Whoa, you must be wealthy. No, I had to downsize. <laughs> I had to compromise. Uh, from uh, there, from California, friend, first one in here this morning. I had to compromise. I had to downsize. But watch this. But I lost nothing. I gained everything. I, I didn't lose a thing. Now, I had to trim some fat away to focus on Jesus because uh, I too had become a fat cat. You ever heard the term nature before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I had to, I had to step back and, and focus on Jesus. I hear, here, here are two phrases I've been using for years and I apologize for the handouts that I left in in another car uh, this morning, but but uh, remember this, and I think that they're feminine anyway. These three, the first one is three Fs. Three Fs that I apply to my ministry, and, and it's all about Jesus. Okay. Faith, focus, repeat after me, please. Let's do that. I told this is a participation. This is, this is participation. It's not a class. We, we are communing together in Jesus' name. All right. Faith, faith, focus, focus finish. finish. Yeah. Got to have faith. Got to have faith in the Father, in the name of Jesus. You got to focus on your mission. And our mission and our goal is to win souls for Christ and for kingdom building. And our finish is when the Lord, there's no retirement, hey, wait a minute. Um, this, this work that God has called us to, uh, that, that this, this ministry, um, it doesn't pay as well as being uh, the president or the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. It doesn't pay as well, but the retirement is out of this world. All right. <laughs> I got you. Let me see it right over there. The retirement is out of this world. Amen. Yeah. 
Money can buy you a bed, but it can't buy you rest. Money can buy you books, but it can't buy you wisdom. Money can buy you some people and a, and a posse and a group, but it can't buy you true friends. <laughs> yeah, money can buy you medicine, but it can't buy you health. But all of that can be gained uh, with, with making Jesus the center of your joy. Yeah, watch this. There's another one, uh, and we gotta do this. And then I'm gonna ask for some smiles in here this morning because I've been smiling at you all morning. Um, and I tell my congregation sometime, if, if you got joy, tell your face. If you're happy, tell your face. Tell your face, say face, be happy. Smile, watch this. Uh, here's what we gotta do. Jesus was not about sadness and doubtless. Uh, Pastor Benjamin, uh, here it is, here it is. Three L's to go with those three L's, three L's. And, and this is not mine. I, I didn't coin this. I just believe in this. Live, laugh, and love. Yeah. Live. Live, live, live the life of righteousness. Live the life of plenty. Live the life that, that, that the Lord have, has given to us and, and blessed us with. Live it. Live that life. Live. Laugh. You says, well, you know, um, it's not, I'm, I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop, and I have to have a serious face on it. Right? So let me help you with that. The day when I stop laughing and enjoying life is the day when I, <laughs> then I'll retire myself. <clears throat> and, and, and that won't be any time soon. Watch this. Uh, live, laugh. What, what, what do you mean by laugh? Well, let me, let me help you with this laugh. Jesus said in, in the Lord's Prayer. I know uh, Matthew 6, we call it the Lord's Prayer. When the Sabbath says, Lord, teach us how to teach us to pray as Jesus, to, as a, a, a John taught us Sabbath to pray. He says, no. He says, when you pray, pray our Father, which art in heaven. That's the model prayer. That's not the Lord's Prayer. That's the model prayer. He says, pray Make sure you have all of these ingredients in your prayer. Because if you read those few verses, you'll see everything we need to say to the Lord in that model prayer is there. First, acknowledging the Father who art in heaven. Hallowed, holy would be thy name and then going on down. But the Lord's prayer is found in John chapter 17. There in the upper room. And John chapter 17, when, when after the feast of the Passover, and after he had, uh, he had uh, orchestrated, uh, and he had, um, he had facilitated the first communion service, then Jesus, what's this? Jesus, Jesus began to pray. Before, they went, before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he began to pray. And he prayed, and he prayed, in the presence of his disciples. And I'm going to get to this smile uh, in a second. Just put a semicolon there. Watch this. He prayed. But watch his prayer. Watch his prayer. Church leaders, he prayed. But when Jesus in his prayer, he prayed a prophetic prayer. He prayed a prayer of the past, the present, and the future. When he said, Jesus said, he said, Father, I have finished my task. My mission is over. It, it, you can say amen to that. Amen. It, you know, you know, well, let, let me break John 17 down a little bit more then. I have finished my work, but he hadn't gone to Gethsemane yet. I have finished my mission that you gave me, but he hadn't gone to Gethsemane yet. Lord, I have finished my assignment that you sent me to earth to do. And the disciples are looking at him. What do you mean you finished? We're you looking at you. And then he said this very profound statement, uh, Pastor David. He said, Now give me back my glory. <laughs> 
give me back my glory that I had with you from the foundation of the world. I want my glory back. But this is, and he said, give me back. But he hadn't gone through Calvary. He hadn't gone through the tomb. But he could say that because he was Jesus. You can say that because we are Jesus' people. We can say that because he's our elder brother. We can say that because the power of his presence and his might, we teach and we preach. And if it's not prevalent in your churches, then bring that power back. There's still power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Demons Amen. tremble at the sound of the name. If a demon's going to tremble, God Almighty, we ought to be, we ought to be downright giddy and, and just, Amen. just got goosebumps coming all over us. See, now that's a nice smile. That's a nice smile. Jesus said, Jesus said, watch this. If in the midst of that prayer, he says, my joy. My mind. Okay, I'm moving around too much. Ember, you tell me, uh, you got you got you got stand professors stand like this, and they say, in the same age with technological advances, <laughs> um, that's not real. Not if you feel with the Holy Ghost. Anybody here feel with the Holy Ghost? Not yet. Okay, all right. Watch this. She said, "My joy." When I said, "Live, laugh, and love." <laughs> Do you have the joy of Jesus in you? Do you have the joy of Jesus in you? He says, my joy, not your joy. <laughs> Our joy is often uh, surrounded by circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Our joy, but it, it, it's, it's a thing called happiness. We, happiness. Uh, yeah, happiness, happiness is happenstance. We need, we need outside things to make us happy, but not with the joy of Jesus. Yeah, Am I right, Pastor? You're right. Uh, turn, your, turn your card around so, so I can call your name. Yeah, Esteban. Esteban. Yeah. Pastor Esteban. Yeah. Jesus said, my joy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Pastor Daniel, he doesn't care whether you got joy or not. Of your joy, because your joy, uh, you know, you, he doesn't care. He doesn't, but Jesus does. That's why he said, Yes, that's why he said, Bishop, he said, my joy, my joy. I leave with you. Right, 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 right. <laughs> God, oh, man, I'm going to go back to you before I get, because I won't be invited to be a, a presenter again. Uh, Got to come back again, Pastor Kim. Okay. I'm going to make my way back. He said, my joy, I leave with you. Why? So that your joy might be full. Yeah, yeah. My joy, I leave that your joy might be full. So then, that's a reason to live, laugh, and love. Amen. 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 Now, when Jesus said that to this, I prayed in the presence of the disciples. Anybody want? Anybody wants to? Want, wants to? And I bring the mic to you. Uh, why? Why was it important? In your in your cleaning, uh, that for Jesus to pray in the presence of his disciples before they went to Gethsemane and then uh, to the trial, arrested. Why? Raise raise your hand and bring the mic to you. I got a gift for you if you if you could. Anybody else? <laughs> I mean, why do you? I mean, there's no right or wrong answer in here today. This is this is not a test. Why do you why do you believe Jesus prayed such a long and intense and intimate prayer in John chapter 17 uh, in the presence of his disciples? Right now, Richard. Yeah. You you got you got Pastor Benjamin got. You feel the separation. Huh? You feel the separation just a little bit later on. Okay. You said prophetically that Jesus felt the separation later on in Gethsemane and the cross. Yes, okay. That's good, that's good. I never thought of that. I'm, I'm, I'll give you your kudos if I repeat that. <laughs> now, <I'm, laughs> uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna write that down. Let me say that again, Pastor Richard. Yes, Pastor. I believe is that they might see his dependency on the Father and the Father's power and presence. Wow. 
Oh, wow. Separation? Yeah. See how Jesus uh, elevated uh, God. And he says, not my will, but thy will be done. And there at, the, at Lazarus' grave, when he looked toward heaven and he prayed, he said, uh, you know, Lord, I know you always hear me, but for the benefit of the others. Good answer. I saw another one over here. Okay. Um, good answer here. This is a tie state. And um, these are, and you take them and lock it behind your, on, on the, and, and your tie would not be moving. I locked mine down with a vest today. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Pastor uh, Michael. Yeah. Jesus was teaching them how to rely on God always. But in times of trouble, we should keep on praying until they see God's manifestation. Amen. Yeah. That's a good answer. Did you hear that? Let me think. Uh, uh, Stop. Priest, priest. Come with me. Prayer, <coughs> priest, prayer. Sir. It's not like a priest, prayer. Okay. Yeah, he he's was praying like a priest. Yes. Uh, highest priest for in behalf of his disciples. Amen. Oh, some great answers. Just come, come. I don't want to run back down here and get tired. I want to slept for two, two and a half hours since Easter. Okay. Well, this will lock your time down. Yeah, I had this business uh, before the pandemic. And uh, so. Who else, who else answered, who else spoke? That's been the new first, weren't you? Okay, I, I, the sound's all right, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop walking in front of me. We're good. I'm gonna stop walking in front of the speaker. <laughs> all right, God bless you. Now, watch this. I also believe that he was encouraging his disciples, like uh, what pastor just left out, encouraging them that You remember when he told the disciples, when he said, I, I'm going back to Jerusalem. Yeah. We got to go there. The temple is going to be torn down. But it'll be raised again in three days. <laughs> so this, uh, this continued in his prayer, a prophetic prayer. Church leaders, like, don't just dare to do it. Do it. Pray. Pray, pray with prophecy in your prayer. Pray, and, and it's always, and your prayer always has to end with Jesus. Um, I pray, I don't, I don't charge God foolishly, and I don't, you can't trick God, but, but I do, when it's, the Holy Spirit is moving in me and in my prayer, then in my prayer life, morning, noon, and night, especially at my altar, um, then I will thank God for what he's already done. Father, I'm praying for the healing of Sister Roundtree. That's my fictitious person. I don't know. Anybody in the name of Sister Roundtree? Okay. Okay. I did that when I was preaching at, uh, in, uh, at Bishop uh, Charles Blake out at West Angeles in California. And I use Sister Roundtree. Sometimes she's a good church lady, but sometimes she's the one that, you know, raises, keep things going. So, you know Bishop Blake out there in California? Yes. So, I used her as one who aggravated the church, aggravated the congregation. So then, uh, and I use the name Sister Roundtree. So every time I said it, a group of ladies would just laugh and giggle and clap their hands. So I said, okay, I don't know where this is going. So after the sermon, I came down on the pulpit with Bishop Charles Blake. He's, he's a retired bishop of the Church of, of um, the National Presiding Bishop of the Church of God in Christ. And we came down on the pulpit, and all these little ladies descended on me. And I said, uh, yes. They said, you know Sister Roundtree? I said, I uh, know. So you talked about, about 10 minutes during your sermon. Thank God I didn't make her really, really bad in the sermon. I just reference her. But when I pray for a person, 
I rely on the Holy Spirit before I seal it with Jesus' name um, to move through my prayer so that I will pray prophetically, say, thank you, Father, for healing and blessing. Sister Roundtree. Yeah. That's what Jesus did in the upper room before he went to Gethsemane. And then he gave us that power. He gave us that authority to do that. But it must be in the pattern and it must be in Jesus' name. It is all about Jesus. How much time do I have, Pastor Kim? 30 minutes. Oh, 30 minutes? Okay. Uh, including q and time. Oh, we got to have cutie. Okay, well, let me do this. <clears throat> Jesus, the second person in the Godhead. Um, we all know that, that God wrapped himself in his son, in the flesh, to come among us. And Jesus went through... Everything, everything we're going through, everything with all the pain, all the suffering, all Jesus has already been there. Done. He knows what it feels like in the flesh. <laughs> he did it. He got on many. No wonder they're in the upper room there in John chapter 7. He says, No, Father, I'm through. Give me back my glory. But he went through everything we go through. He went through. But um, Jesus even had to pay taxes. It's tax season. <laughs> he wouldn't pay taxes. And, and he says, well, Jesus, we got to pay taxes. He says, well, I, I didn't come to break the law, but to fulfill the law. He says, go fishing. Um, and then paraphrasing. You won't find this in the scripture. What is a paraphrasing? Um, that's, that's, that's going into the scripture to make it uh, applicable to daily life. Go fishing. Go fishing, Jesus? Yes. Um, my father, our father, has prepared a fish <laughs> from the foundation of the world without tax money in his mouth. <laughs> That's the kind of Jesus we serve, God. Man, let me tell you, man, it, he made a way, he made a way and we have to keep him the center of our joy. There's a song, I don't know if you've heard it before, it's not popular anymore, Richard Smallwood, I believe it was. Uh, the song says, I'm just a nobody, trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Have you ever heard that before? Okay, well, I agree with, with that's what you're doing. Uh, but you're not, you're not a nobody. So I don't allow my choirs to sing that. They love that song back in the day. Um, we're not a nobody. We can't be a nobody. We, we are saved by grace. We are, we are saved as, 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 a, as, as a Pastor Park said last night. Well, we, well stop singing and uh, stop that. 5 a.m. breakfast with him this morning. He kept saying last night, stop saying that I'm lost and oh, I'm, no. We are saved by grace. We are saved. Jesus said, if I may use an illustration, watch this, Jesus said, Jesus said, you know what? He said, uh, in question, he says, um, my father has, has you in his hand. And my father has given you to me. No man can take you out of my father's hand. Therefore, no man can take you out of my hand because the father and I are one. So when you're washing the brother of the lamb, you're saved eternally as, eternally as, as uh, Dr. Park, the founder, said last night. Let me do this with him. Let's say this for you. Then I'm going to do an illustration. I'm going to ask questions. Any questions? Because we've got to talk about uh, Jesus, the intercessor. 
Here's a statement I love to use, not just at Easter time. I use this. I use this for me. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Death certificate. Gave me my birth certificate. Let me see if I do it again. Wait, let me see. Let me see it right here. I see a smile on your face. <laughs> the, the, uh, the translator got it. You got the right. Jesus' death certificate gave me my new birth certificate. Yes. And it cannot be revoked. Yes. It can't be taken away. Washed in his blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Now, I'm going to open for questions because I want to do a uh, Q&A period with you. Are there any questions or statements or comments? Because I want us to get uh, before we before we go. <laughs> Sir, uh, yeah, Jesus death certificate was gave me my birth certificate. Yeah, if he hadn't died on the cross, I would not have a new life. Yeah, we are saved with a purpose for a purpose. You will call church leaders with a purpose for a purpose. You say, well, my church is small. Well, there are no small churches. <laughs> because Jesus didn't say, upon this rock I build mega churches. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm ready to step on somebody. Any mega church? Uh, uh, in that terminology, I kind of dispel because, because that's what they call my, my church. But, 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 but I still, 43 years, when I come out of the pulpit and give the invitation to discipleship, I go out to uh, the lobby, to the foyer, I thought, the foyer, and I embrace everybody who dares to stand in line for about an hour. <laughs> go upstairs, get a shower, and do it all over again. Why? Why? Why do I do that Sunday after Sunday? Because I believe uh, okay, we must model ourselves after Jesus. That's the Dickens. After Jesus. After, yeah, yes, you, yeah, yes. You. After Jesus. You said after Jesus? Yes. Jesus was, and I've written a book. It may be out of print now. Um, it, it's it's in, it's entitled the shepherd must smell like the sheep. The shepherd must smell like the sheep. The shepherd must be approachable, available, accessible, and accountable. Amen. Yeah. The shepherd must be approachable. Yes. Gotta be. Jesus was. You said, well. Uh, Yes, he was. If Jesus wasn't approachable and accountable and accessible, the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years would have been healed. <laughs> uh, that, that's some of my colleagues, they may see this film, I won't call their names, who, who, who uh, finished preaching and disappear. I don't know, maybe, and I'm not going to say, maybe that's, that's what you do. But it's just, Fade away until next Sunday. Well, and the people need a touch. They need, they want to, you know, it makes it makes the word real when you ah, did you show Jesus showed the human side when he wept at Lazarus' grave. That didn't keep him from being God incarnate. So the woman with this your blood for 12 years, uh, she was healed because Jesus walked among. The people. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He was. Uh, that didn't. Uh, that didn't diminish his power, his place with the Father. This woman with the issue of blood, according to Leviticus law, was unclean. 
because she's been hemorrhaging for 12 long years. She wasn't even supposed to be in public. But she got to Jesus because Jesus got to her. She didn't have enough strength to go to the synagogue. They wouldn't allow her to come in. She didn't have strength to go to the mountaintop because she wouldn't allow her to go in. She crawled in the dusty streets yeah. to bring her case to Jesus. But Jesus was approachable, available, and accessible to her. Yes. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open questions and then I want to do a, I call it a living parable. I don't call it demonstrations. It's a living parable because that's what Jesus did. He told heavenly stories by word power. And uh, living parable, let me show you. I'm also a, a, a film producer, and I, I have a film on Amazon Prime now uh, titled, and you can write this down, I want you to view it and pass it to all your friends. It's entitled, It Ain't Over, on Amazon Prime. You'll see the poster with my, with my bald head on there. So. Uh, and, and, and two Hollywood actors. It ain't always so. And the subtitle is, subtitle is Hope Fights Cancer. So I produce, executive produce, directed this film uh, with my own funds because of the number of deaths and funerals that I've had to preach and officiate with babies up to grandmothers and granddads with this hideous disease called cancer. But the film brings hope. I see you, you, you touched by saying now. But the film, the film brings hope to you and brings life to you because through the film, um, uh, you see a father praying and said, hold on son, we're gonna pray to Jesus and ask him to heal throughout the film. You'll see that. The second one is called Sunday Morning Rapture. I did that one years ago. Over 7 million people have viewed Sunday Morning Rapture. Sunday Morning Rapture is free out there on YouTube and all other platforms. Guess what it does? Here it is, pastors. Here it is, leaders. Here it is, pastors. About. Sunday Morning Rapture, the film. God says, do this film, Shields, because when I preach, what if, what if the... What if the rapture occurred on a Sunday morning and 102 people accepted Christ that morning? So, of course, you've got to take it to the world. Now, over 7 million people have viewed the film. The last count was over 300,000 had accepted Christ to a film. If the rapture occurs on a Sunday morning, that will be, be, be the most horrific time for the rapture to occur, because that'd be those people who think that they're entitled to be raptured, because I'm in the choir stand. <laughs> you, you got it, because I'm on the deacon's man, because I'm in the pulpit. Surprise to you, you one, of the, one of the pastors in the film got left behind, but he gives a testimony, he said, I thought I was saved. I thought I was preaching Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, amen. Now, uh, any questions? And uh, before I do this living parable, Sunday morning rapture, and it ain't over. Yeah, any any you want to be in the sequel to Sunday morning rapture? I'll start filming in uh, in June. I'll give you a card. And, and any of you all have I've heard here in he's in Atlanta now. Bishop Paul Martin, the, the gospel artist. No? I am. You have? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's singing the theme song, Your Tears. Mm -hmm. Just a temporary relief. <laughs> because God got you. Go ahead and cry it out right now. Just a temporary relief. When you preach Jesus and teach Jesus. Yes, for real. Any questions? Any, any comments? Any input? Yes, sir. I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, uh, listening to you, I know you've been in the ministry for a long time. And uh, I think you've had impact on people. So can you tell us 
what made you, or how, how you made it to be able to have that impact on people. Looking at 7 million people watching your, your, your film, it means it's a lot. So how can we, the, the young ones, you may call young ones, from the age, from the young churches, will be able to have that impact that you've had for so long? Yeah. How did I impact so long? Let me tell you. Uh, I patterned myself after the word. We must preach the word. The word is Jesus. John, John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And the word was God. And then in the 14th verse it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Saints of God, um, Impact is by preaching Jesus. I don't preach down to people. I preach Jesus. And um, children, uh, on, on East, uh, I showed, I showed the, 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 the photos to Pastor Kim, Pastor Damon Kim, uh, last night. Uh, on Easter Sunday, just two days ago, uh, three days ago, let's say two, yeah, three days ago, uh, seven children came up and accepted Christ. <laughs> children first. Children. Children from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 7. Not an adult move in the church is packed over 3,000 people. But after the children came, because they got it. <laughs> I didn't preach down to them. I don't, I, I don't, the Bible says, you remember, you remember when you, <laughs> You remember when, when, when the charge was given to, to uh, Timothy by Paul? He says, Timothy, my son, my associate minister, my assistant pastor, <laughs> Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That time is now. He says, and if you don't, he says, they, they, will, they will find people with itching ears. And the itching ears are there now. You know, they come in for an hour, tell me how I can, I can uh, sow a seed and go to my mailbox and get a tree. That doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So then, you know, preach Jesus, preach. And now, you'll have some fall on the way because then there will be some people who say, well, I have learned as much as I can in your ministry and i, I got to move on because, you know, you, you keep preaching to you. Oh, upon this rock I build my church. <laughs> who else am I going to preach? I can't preach shields. <laughs> I, I can't preach Dickens. I can't preach Daniel. i got to preach Jesus. So for everyone... Okay, let me turn my back when it's so okay for him and doing this. Um, there are some people the church can do without. There are those Pharisees. When Jesus was walking the earth, some Pharisees who were just there to find fault. Justifying Paul, not there, not there, not there to, to, uh, to be blessed by Jesus and hear the word. They were there to find Paul. So you, I mean, don't know, don't be, don't ever apologize about preaching Jesus. All right, now, that's right. He is the center of our joy. He is the center of our ministry. Upon this rock I build my church. Upon this rock I build my church. Upon this rock I build my church. Now, when when did the church it did, it, it wasn't built right there in the Caesarea Philippi, when Jesus asked a question. It, it, it was not established yet. When was it established? Huh? Uh, after Jesus, 40 days he ascended to heaven. Then the disciples, uh, 120, including the mother of Jesus, waited in the upper room for 10 more days, and the day of Pentecost was fully come. 
Then the church was infused, empowered, and I like to use this terminology in one of my books, employed by the Holy Ghost when he came down and fill the house and fill everybody in the house. And then Peter came out with an Old Testament text that he preached and thousands united with the church that day. Jesus is interceding for us right now in glory. Any other questions or statements before I do this demonstration? This is living parable, not demonstration. Uh, yes, I don't need my pocket. I think I yeah, yeah, but they fit me. Oh, okay. My question is when you express something that you say you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Why do you use the word ghost? Because the Bible does. Ghost and spirit yeah, are yeah, interchangeable. Yeah, uh, Job chapter 4 tells me that the ghost you can see and the spirit you can you only feel it. But then the Bible's the Bible interchanges uh, go, Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit both. In the, in the upper room, when the church was filled, it doesn't say what uh, you could see something, you feel something. It says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So it's the it, it, same, same, same person, third person in the God. Well, oh, because uh, Matthew chapter 14 says, when he was walking on the water, they say they saw a ghost. So the Holy Spirit, you can see him, but you can feel him. Yeah. Well, that's my question. Yeah. Well, well they're, they're interchangeable, by the way. Don't, don't, get, don't get caught up with that semantic of the, of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, because the most powerful uh, presence of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, when he came to take office in this world, in us, was on the day of Pentecost. Yes, on the day of Pentecost. And while they were there waiting for the power, Jesus said, Jesus, go tarry. Tarry means wait. Go wait until you have been empowered. The word said, I've given you the word for, for these years, but not, now you can't take the word without power. You can't preach it without power. You can't save souls without power. Go wait in the upper room until you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place with one accord. And the mighty Russian wind came in, uh, uh, and the fire set upon each one of their heads, 120 men and women like we got here today. Um, it doesn't take 120. We got enough to get the feeling in here, Lord. And, and it says that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they came out with power. Yes. Yes, ma'am. About the Bible, there are so many things and so many questions you can ask. But all I know is God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus Christ rose, he appeared to his disciples in the room. It was closed, and there were no outrage, and they were locked in, and he appeared to them. So, our God and everything is filled. When we breathe and we are blessed, because we believe that we are not seen, and when you believe in him, you see him and you feel him, you, ex you experience him. So there is no question of who God is. And that's why we are here, because we have believed in him who came, died and rose. And he is now living up in the Father, Amen. waiting for us to finish our work and go and glorify with him. Okay. And that's why I pray in John 17 about us, so that we could be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And that's why he said, they are of the world, but I give them to you, Father. Amen. Amen. You lead me right into the, uh, uh, into the living parable. Let me do this for you. Right into the, Jesus is interceding for us right now. Right. Amen. Do nothing. Amen. Amen. When, he, when he ascended into heaven, he was, he, <laughs> on the 40th day after the resurrection, he traveled with his disciples a Sabbath day's journey from Jerusalem from the upper room. A second day's journey would have taken to the Mount of Olives. And there, and there, and there, and there appeared two men in white. Uh, and uh, Jesus was there. 
and with the disciples. And that's when he gave them the char charge, go, go tarry. The word, so I, I've taught you the word. I, I've given you the word. I am the word. God, the word, the word, the word. Who can teach a word better than the word? <laughs> the word gave them the word. But they still were not empowered yet to take the word and preach the word and teach the word. He said, you need power. You're right, Tom. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. No, watch this. Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5, 18. We know when we accept Christ, and then we have the indwelling Holy Spirit. He comes and indwells. But then there's another stage, there's another level. And, and Ephesians 5, 18 says it. It says, be not drunk with wine where in excess, but be filled with my spirit, said the Lord. In other words, don't be under the influence of anybody or anything other than my Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus then ascended back to heaven. Give me back my glory that I had from the foundation of the world. And he sat down at the, he's sitting down at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Let me give, let me give you an illustration. Give me, give me three people, please. Any three. Don't be scared. Okay. All right. You see? Okay. Give me, give me a third person. All right, sir. All right. Stay right here. I know. I don't need to see because he can't sit in heaven. Listen, because he's, he's representing the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right, we got to do this. That's it. Okay. All right. You be. Uh, get your, get your, your purse. Up here. I'm working. A producer's mind just clicks when I mm -hmm. okay, okay. Watch this. Okay. God the Father. God the Son. Jesus is sitting. He ascended to heaven. We have the Holy Spirit is in us. We have Two intercessors. We have the Holy Spirit interceding in us, through us, for us, every one of us. In heaven, we have Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Ah, watch this. The Holy Spirit in us, we pray. Um, John, Romans 8, 26, 27 says, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit does. He knows because he knows, he knows our infirmities and he knows the will of God. When you pray, uh, please invoke the Holy Spirit Amen. to pray for you and pray through you so that your prayers get beyond the roof. <laughs> so here is a petitioner. Here's one who needs her prayers to reach heaven. She's got a burden. Kind of heavy too. <laughs> She's got a burden. She's got her whole burden. So then, uh, you're going to take your burden to the Holy Spirit. Huh? So, you come the Holy Spirit is always receptive. So you pray in the Spirit, with the Spirit. Father, I've got a heavy burden. I need you to move right now on my heavy burden. Please, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, bless my prayer to the throne of God. In Jesus' name. You leave it with the Holy Spirit. You stay there because you got it. You leave it. And then the Holy Spirit then takes your prayers <laughs> to the intercessor, Jesus, in heaven. And places your burden there. But the Holy Spirit is still everywhere at the same time. So he, he, he doesn't leave. And, but move aside so they can see the Holy Spirit. So then... Our intercessor 
who has the ears of the Father. <laughs> Why is he in the seat? Why is he sitting in the right hand of the Father? Because it's a place of authority. That's, he says, I'm going back, but I'm going to intercede for you. Anybody feeling that right now? So then the Holy Spirit then takes that burden and says, Father, your child <laughs> has a heavy burden. And I believe that you're going to answer right now. Wait, so she brought this burden to him. And then, then God says, I hear. And I hear everything you say. But I'm going to bless her by taking her burden away and giving her a just reward. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Give God a praise offering.